Um, I will call this meeting of the Historic District Commission to order at 7.01 p.m. And uh, Todd, would you read the call? Sure. <clears throat> Town of Groton, notice of public hearing, Historic District Commission. The Historic District Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, August 6, 2024 at 7 p.m. at the Groton Town Hall Annex, 134 Groton Long Point Road, and virtually via the Zoom platform to hear the following applications requesting a certificate of appropriateness. HCC 24-0052, 74 High Street, Lynn Schroeder, applicant, Mystic River Historical Society, owner, roof and chimney modifications, pin number 26191A3033763E. E. HCC 24-0053, two Gravel Street, Peter Spring Steel, applicant, applicant, Town of Groton, owner, flagpole and sidewalk modifications, pin number 26191841213131E. ACC 24-0054-1 Water Street, Peter Springsteel applicant, Ed Cassidy, owner, signage and shutter removal, pin number 26191830087888. A Zoom meeting link will be posted to the town's website meetings calendar. Applications are on file and available for public inspection online and during normal business hours at the Planning Department, 134 Groton Long Point Road, Groton, Connecticut. Dated this 30th day of July, 2024 at Groton, Connecticut, Todd Brady, Secretary. What's the E mean, Tom? Say it again. What was the e? the e at the ends of these pin numbers? Never oh, they, sometimes if they're um, lots are subdivided or something, there's a there's a oh, okay. letter designation. Got it. Thank you. Um, I will waive the hearing procedures if anyone wants to read them. They're the yellow sheet over there, and move on to public hearings. Call HTC twenty four dash zero zero five two seventy four I Street. Bono. I'm Lynn Schroeder. I'm uh, the uh, chair of the Buildings and Grounds Committee for the Mystic River Historical Society. Uh, thanks for your time. I've got um, four copies of what I'm going to review, hard copy. Uh, Sue had mentioned that I should bring some copies. So I I kind of went on the preliminary hearing and four copies. So I'll sure Yeah, okay. great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So the first um, page is the GIS um, to just identify where the property is. It's on the south end of High Street, uh, the side uh, south of uh, Route 1. And um, we've got it oriented if we uh, um, in town um, identify in the upper left. The property is the one with the, um, the red circle. That's the Portersville Academy. That's a historic building. In Mystic, it was the first uh, schoolhouse for District 5, uh, 50 years ago, um, the Mystic River Historical Society purchased uh, the property from the town for a dollar and um, rehabilitated the building substantially. Um, and uh, we had an inspection this past April because we hadn't um, really been proactively managing the, the building for a while. Our, our committee is stretched in terms of personnel so things, you know, were sort of falling to the back burner. So we hired a professional inspector to come in and tell us what was the um, state of the two structures. We also have an archives building um, on the property, which is the building to the right. The middle thing is a parking lot. And um, he identified several things, but the key um, items for your information are the chimney. And it was um, deteriorated beyond the point that it could be restored. In the preliminary meeting, I brought photographs, if you recall, and it's in um, really miserable condition. So it needs to be replaced. And um, the roof also was replaced 45 years ago. And with cedar shingles, it's the original roof that was on it at that time. And due to the fact that the cost um, for cedar versus asphalt is 3X, um, we got two bids for asphalt and cedar. And um, you know, we're a small uh, nonprofit. We that would be a difficult um, bridge for us to cross in terms of the cost. So, we'd like to go to an asphalt um, roof. So, that's why I'm here. Excuse me, Lynn. Sure. Um, Tom, are you going to run the camera on the documents, or is there anybody in the public on the Zoom call? And even the guys in the audience can't. Um, see the handouts less. And I, I would make the suggestion to bring the microphone closer to you since that's 
that come from that come from hey Europe. one quick question are all these documents in your electronic I didn't yes they are okay. they're all they're the only documents there in the preliminary preliminary meeting I brought photographs of the roof and the chimney just to show the um the current um, condition <clears throat> sorry for that so do you have to continue? Yes. Okay. So um, I don't know if you have a typical flow um, in terms of what you'd like to see next, but uh, so what I have included, the second page is um, the bid that we plan to pursue um, if we get the approval. And it describes uh, what we're doing as well as um, the product that we'd like to use, these GAF weather blocker architectural shingles and um, a couple of pages in is a photograph. And I actually brought samples in the earlier meeting and those are out in my car if you wanted to see them. Um, what we had said at the time, I got samples of um, the fox hollow gray, the slate, as well as weathered wood because in the guidelines um, for Groton, it does say um, if you're not able to um, pursue cedar, and again, as a historical society, of course, we'd like to. If we had an unlimited budget, um, you know, and it's an it's an important building um, historically, we would do cedar. But um, I did read in the guidelines that um, a weathered wood would be um, preferred. Our uh, board would like to go with a lighter gray because of the um, understanding that you get a longer life out of a lighter color. So we, we'd we like to go with this fox hollow gray if that's acceptable, but um, whether they do have a weathered wood um, shingle that would be fairly consistent with um, the cedar that's up there right now. So, but, but your application doesn't actually indicator designate which roof you're going to use which color i mean we can I, do it now yeah i don't know if there are what um it's did, not, I, I don't know yeah i might not have explicitly said that in the description okay of, that's not a problem i just wanted to, to okay. verify that. no it might not our preference would be to go with fox um hollow gray uh but if uh it was deemed you know um preferable weathered wood is a product that looked pretty good and again, I have a sample out in uh, my vehicle. So that's what we'd like to do with the roof. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, the chimney needs to be restored or replaced to the roof line. And we got a bid for that. And what's highlighted in um, yellow there is uh, the plan to use a restoration brick um, molded for time period accuracy and with mortar um, that would be accurate to the time period. And the following page there is um, a sample of the pro of the product that the Mason thought might be most appropriate. It's quite similar in color to the bricks that are there. Um, and then the next series is uh, photographs that were um, requested as part of the application. So. I have a streetscape going north, a streetscape going south, the three buildings that abut. The first abutter is our other um, structure, which is our archives building. To the north, our abutter is uh, this yellow colonial style house. That's our abutter to the south. And then our abutter to the west is this home here. And then the next four photographs are the four photographs of the facade. This is the back or the southeast side. This is the west street side. This is the north, which abuts the yellow colonial house. And this one's the money shot. This is our gorgeous Portersville Academy uh, 50 years ago. Um, there was only one door in the middle um, when the town was using it for various um, municipal purposes. They got rid of the two doors, just put one in the center. The spider um, window had been boarded up. But there was no cupola. We put a cupola on it, restored the spider um, glass window, 
put the two doors in, which is how it was originally structured. So this is our, our beautiful Portersville Academy. And then this is the streetscape heading north on High Street. And this is the streetscape heading south on High Street. So those were the documents that were um, my understanding of what was um, requested in the application. Oh, and your pictures, your pictures illustrate it, but, but I remember us commenting in the prelim that your the angle of the roof is so hard you can barely see the shingles from any of these perspectives. So right, um, that was whatever you chose wasn't going to be, um, you know. We were going to fight it dramatically be because there was such small, like visual impact. But... The only visual impact, really, and I think, um, and when you don't, well, you see it here, um, is on the cupola. Yeah. And if you recall, we got three bids from our vendors. We asked them to do uh, cedar. We asked for asphalt, and then we asked for asphalt on the main roof and cedar on the cupola in case that was more um, you know, acceptable to you um, because it is, it is more um, noticeable from the streetscape. But the other thing I wanted to mention was that um, those beautiful homes that I showed you that are our butters, they all have asphalt um, roofs and none of the homes in that neighborhood and many of them are uh, beautifully maintained on historic structures, they all have asphalt architectural style shingles. <clears throat> so so we should presume that you're asking for the Fox Hollow. Yes. Okay. You you want to just initial that please? Oh, I will that sure. Thing. Oh here. Oh sorry. Taking off cedar shake and putting some in. Well it sounds like the cedar shake. You Thank know, you. There. No, I know we don't you we we'll all Thank discussed. You. In the pre-app, yeah, we we discussed that she had bids for all three, and you're all comfortable with that. It, so, I mean, I'm going to give my opinion. This is probably the most preservationist guy here. No, I'd prefer to see cedar on there. As a board member of the other historic district in town, I do understand that we're all on very very slim budgets. So, I'm I'm <clears throat> no. I mean, to answer your question, if I'd love to see cedar go back on, I just understand they're dealing with the budget issue. Yeah, the, the asphalt is 9,000. The combination of um, as, asphalt main roof, uh, cedar, um, the cupola was 13,000. And that's a different one. Uh, uh, I think it was 27,000 for um, cedar. If we went with Pocketuck roofing, we got a bid from Klaus Larsen. Their asphalt was 16,000 there. Um, combination was 18 and their cedar was 44,500. So um, that would eat up a substantial amount of our, of our uh, truck, our um, funds. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. I, I appreciate your uh, services. Uh, uh, well, I'm presuming it's a volunteer yes. job no, I mean, and to preserve the uh, historical society. I'm a member of the club. I like your newsletter. I don't think that prohibits me from oh. voting on this one, Eric. So uh, thank you. I'm happy that uh, you're working to preserve a, a very important building. And uh, I wasn't here for the pre-application. No, I, I'm... <clears throat> And I'm not deliberating yet. I'm yeah. just saying I just appreciate your presentation. Yeah, was, Very well prepared. Appreciate your completeness. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I just did John's point. It's just National Register place. It just doesn't. I don't know. If you don't if you don't have the money, you don't have the money. What are you gonna do? And this is cedar roof. It's Leaking? Like, it's, it... it's not. The flashing around the chimney is leaking, but oh. the roof itself is not. But um, I... but it's past its useful life, I, oh, I think. Yeah. It's 40, 45 years old, and many of the, uh, uh, the shingles are warped, and uh, none are missing. 
Um, and I could certainly provide you know, the photographs that we have in the inspection report. Um, may have many, uh, you know, up close photographs that. And, and again, I'm sensitive to being part of the old Nistic historical site. I mean, I know we, our budget's got to go to other things besides just take care of the building too. So it's always that, that fine, right. that fine line. We don't bring in uh, enough money to cover our annual operating expenses. So every year we're drawing down a little bit of our, um, Endowment. I'm at a loss of the word, right? Endowment, endowment reserves, whatever. Exactly. But Eric's point too, I am also sensitive to the fact that it's downtown, it's a national historic landmark. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I get it. But I don't know. But what, are, what, what are you going to say now in another week? Right. That, and then, yeah. Just that, uh, you know. So I'm not voting on this one because I'm, I'm an alternate tonight, but I mean, would you guys be agreeable to the cupola, the, the more visible part of it? But I don't know if that looks weird then. That's, yeah, that's it's a weird hybrid. Yeah. I have to say both um, roofing companies had that same opinion, but we just wanted the option in case it was something that you thought would um, make sense. But yeah, if, if you were to see the different materials in one view, it would... That would be the odd. <clears throat> as long as you all discussed it, I'm okay. And if a um, you know, if if it makes it more um acceptable or appropriate, um, if the weathered wood shingle, if you feel that that makes more sense. No one on the board is going to resist that. I mean, we'll just be thrilled um, to have you know, the option to have that. that Whatever. Really. Yeah. I, so I was going to say from personal experience, the guy that owned my house before me took cedar shake off the roof and put that weathered wood. Look, it's still an asphalt shingle in my opinion. So yeah. it's like, it's right. Yeah. I don't think it makes any difference. That's from personal experience. I don't think the point needs to out you you all discussed it this you both um you probably shouldn't vote if you're actually a member i know it's really silly but uh i don't think i think i can vote i feel comfortable voting a lot of people are members they have a large large list you know a couple hundred members i haven't i haven't i'm not on any of the committees nobody else here is a member of the mystic River Historical Society? No. No. Well, all you guys should be. Yeah, yeah that's right. incumbent on members of the historical district to be on the committee and support historical renovation and preservation in the yeah. town. I, I, I'm going to say to Eric's point, I'm going to leave it alone. He's been told not to vote before because he's a business owner downtown on businesses that are bug. Yeah, I just, I, I agree, but that's that's my opinion. Uh, I just, again, no. No one is, no one can you can still vote. Oh, well, no. I mean, you have a seat. If he's not seated. No, no. If he's a member, he shouldn't yeah. vote. He's a member yeah, of, you, the, of the organization. Then. Yeah, I mean, you, you made it clear that you're a member and no one has objections. There's no conflict of interest. Okay. We just didn't want to open ourselves up. No. For... That's common and small. Do you remember the whole thing about them not wanting us to know because we own the property? Yeah, before? but I thought that was a stupid decision. So, so, so I well, owning property is one thing, and being a member of the club. Yeah, but owning a piece of property in downtown Mystic, therefore not being able to vote on anything in downtown Mystic, that makes no sense at all. Yeah. yeah. And there's a certain buffer. Okay, it's got too far. Anyways, yeah. all right. Well, I mean, that's my comment more illegally. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Sure. If you're comfortable with it, then we'll just see what No one's here looking at it otherwise. Uh, sure. That's fine with me. Just trying to prevent yeah, future no. hiccups. Well, the rules always change in this town. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I think we're, so we're going to go to Greg. We're good. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your presentation. Um, anyone in the audience have anything to say in support of the application? Anyone against the application? All right, HTC 24-0052 is closed. Uh, HTC 24-0053 to Gravel Street, Peter. To Gravel. Come on up. Two, which one's the first one? Two grab the flagpole. The flag. flagpole. Uh, good evening, Peter Springsteel, architect, 105 Star Street, Mystic, Connecticut. Here tonight uh, representing, uh, I guess, the town and uh, the owners of Central Hall as uh, the owners of Central Hall have a 99-year lease on this property, and so they've been responsible for doing a lot of the improvements. This is the uh, pump station on Gravel Street, and um, I was here for the informal and uh, sort of outlined what uh, they want to do there. Yeah. And that includes um, adding some brick pavers to what is now a concrete sidewalk, um and adding a flagpole uh they've done a lot of work that was approved already that included pavers on on the walkways here and here and here so they want to expand it out into this area here and this is the public way and this is the um paver material that's out there. So we'd be just using the same uh, materials for these additional areas here. And this photograph here shows you the area that we we're talking about. These are the transformers for the uh, downtown area. And this is all concrete now. So that would change over to the brick pavers. And so we'd have a nice contiguous uh, material throughout this area. The other uh, project we want to do is a flagpole, a 30 foot tall flagpole that looks like this. And that would be placed in the paver area right here. Um, there's some um, granite bollards that are mounted along the edge of the walkway right there. So this would be just in board of that. And then there's a the flagpole. And sorry about the blueness of this photo, but this is looking from Gravel Street towards the site where the flagpole would be. And then it would be behind that cone right about there. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, just from uh, how tall is the pump station roof? Pump station roof. Um, well, it's a thirty foot. Yeah, the pump station roof is probably twenty, twenty feet. Central, Central Hall is fifty five, yeah. and then that's the downtown flagpole there. I don't know how tall that is, but yeah. I'm. I think it's like seventy five. Yeah. I was just, just curious, like the scale of thirty feet compared to the rest of the yeah area. it's it's probably Second to floor. here on central hall it's probably taller than the pump station maybe eight to ten feet and that's really all i have on that when you came in for the prelim there were a couple things we talked about i'm not sure if they were addressed or just removed there was something about slippage because it was like handicap. We were talking about um, it was going to be slippery at the. So no, I think it was how can they tell the difference between the pavers and the the ramp? Oh, right, wasn't that it, Peter? Yeah, that was the question. Uh, I don't know that that's an issue. Um, I've never run across that before. I think people can who can't see can sense the difference between brick service and the dots on the okay. pavers. And I thought there was like, but not a key, but like some sort of cement post. For the, was that it? 
Okay. No, no, there, there is an electric gate there now that, that was approved some other time. Excuse me, I mentioned it was about using the flagpole for. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, no, I, that was, yeah, I remember that conversation. Good. 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 You good? You good? Yeah. Uh, anyone in the audience have anything to say in support of the application? Uh, anyone against the application? All right, HTC. 24-0053 is closed. Uh, HTC 24-0054, one Water Street. It's also you. Hey, for the record, Peter Springsteel, architect, uh, 105 Star Street Mystic, representing um, Ed Cassidy, the owner of one... Um, Gravels, uh, Water. Water Street, downtown Mystic. The uh, map right here shows the location of the property. It's the old Densmore Oil Building. Wow. Again? Back and forth. Yeah. And this is what the old Densmore building looked like. Uh, we have been in before for approvals on the outside of that building. Um, basically, the only thing we changed on the outside was the height of the front door, removal of the step that was down here. That was all approved. So I'm here tonight basically for uh, signage and some exterior lighting and the removal of shutters. So you can see on this photograph, there were shutters on the building. We um, want to remove those shutters. And um, the signage package includes um, this building mounted sign right here. And there are some blade signs uh, to replace the ones that used to be there that look like this. These brackets are existing. And there's one at each end of the building. I think last time I was here, we had some question about the the image that the sign maker gave me here. It didn't really have the sign in proper proportion. You can see it's quite a bit bigger here. Um, this is more to scale. And then you can see the two down lights here, which would light that sign up. And those lights look like that. The shutters have already been removed, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can put back um, and then last week, um, as I was walking through downtown, I noticed they were putting the sign up, and I told them, hey, you can't put that sign up yet. It's not been approved. But I said, let me take a picture so you can see the real deal on the building to scale. And along with the blade right, signs. You mean that? So, all right. So those are not in this package here, those blades. That's correct. That's correct. Okay, so. And they've, they've already installed the signs also, right, Peter? Yeah, yeah you should yeah. probably give me those. Yeah, I will. Okay. okay. And this drawing you don't have either, Tom. Right, I have the bigger one. Yeah, that was the sign maker's drawing, which we had questions about last time. So that's it. And the lights and the two signs? Three yes. signs. No, the middle sign's approved, the top one. These yeah. two signs, this sign. That sign's approved. The well, lights. No, this is all. Uh, wait, see. you were here and we went over. Or Informally. Oh, oh. sorry. It's okay. And there were speakers on the building that were taken off, so we're leaving yes. the speakers off. I told them to take the speakers off, that they need to go through. But I don't. And then they need to come through you too, if they're going to do it. There, there are some other changes they're contemplating. We, um, in getting our planning and zoning approval, we had to do a planter and some trees in front of the building. And I don't know, the owners or the tenants sort of finally realized what 
that entailed, and it felt like it was going to block the uh, visibility of their storefront. So we're going to go back to uh, planning and zoning and try to work out a different scenario. But of course, when we do that, we'll be coming back to you. They're talking about actually doing a half wall in front of the building so that they can define an outdoor seating area. Uh, I don't know how planning and zoning will go for with that, but so there's more to come on this. And at that time, we'll probably address the speakers. Yeah, sorry, just because I'm confused. So it's the three signs and the two lights. And the removal of the shutters. shutters. Okay. Does anyone have any comments or questions? The shutters have already been removed. Yeah, but we right. have them if you okay. feel like you want them back. We can put them back. They were never functional shutters. Anyhow, they were just decorative. Is that correct? Yeah, they just screwed, screwed on the last right. Yeah, plastic screw ons. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But in the casing, they weren't even part of the casing. Yeah. I don't have any the only thing I just think we need to consider is you got the two signs on either side. We generally had one sign on each commercial. I was actually gonna... sometimes one sign and one on the building. Sorry. You and I are on the same page. I was gonna bring that up during deliberation. I think this would be the only store downtown with two blade signs. I know it's kind of stupid, but it's also well, there were two brackets there, so they figured. Well, one was Densmore, one was that like larger package. Right, right. Yeah. And we're going to have a uh, an apartment on the second floor. Well, my opinion, for first words, you allowed them to have two signs, everybody else in town is going to want two signs, and then what does that look like? Well, that's just my two cents. I think it's going to Hmm. I think it's right. What that everyone would want two signs? I just think you're going to get more people posting signs. I mean, if the building was huge, it'd be one thing. Like a fuel factory scurry and the big hanging one, then you had a sign. It made sense. But I think it's fine. The one on top. I think one of one of the two is totally fine. I just think you got two within twenty feet of each other. Sorry. I just think. Well, no. If you have other stores, you're going to find that people want them at the beginning and the end of the store because everyone always wants more sign that you can print. So you have to make a decision. Which sign? <laughs> well, either that you go for the two signs and get approved, you go for the two signs and don't get approved, or you decide that you're going to take one sign and tell us which one you want to keep. So you're not on the spot or anything. Just yeah, so if I ask for two signs, you're going to say no. So no, I don't think so. I'll say yes to two signs. I see nothing in the handbook that makes two signs uh, inappropriate, and I don't think there's anything historically wrong with two signs. But although the handbook does talk about massing and comparing it to everything else, and it's now you're giving I'm them more mass. I'm not speaking for other people. I'm speaking for myself. I'm fine with two signs. I'm just saying what I think the handbook says. Well, I don't. I don't want to waste the time of having you turn it down um so if we could one, pull one, if we could pull the, the board one then i can make a decision how about we go for one side and then come back and ask for a second side well, it's kind of I, I understand what you're saying but so we can get out of here tonight with something would you can't you make motions to Vote for one sign or motions yeah, for two yeah. signs. Yeah. yeah. But then I think we can do that. But then the decision is the decision. I mean, I think it, we when we get to deliberations, we can uh, move to uh, approve it as is. If that gets voted down, I think we could move to approve it with one sign instead of two. Uh, I think if it's voted down, it's voted down. I think you can bring it back. I think you have to make a motion. I think we can do it either way we'd like. I think under Robert's rules, you can't. We can look it up. All right, look it up. In that case, we can do it in the other direction. How about I pull the, the, uh, the board? We typically don't do that. We don't do that. You, it's no fun. You're strong. I don't have a strong feeling either way. 
Well, it, I, my, if, it sounds like we're into deliberating. If we deny it for two sides, which he's asked for and applied for, we have to give a reason. And our reason would be, we don't want it to be a precedent. The reason is it's just Nancy. not consistent. It's, the, it's not consistent with any other. Well, Tom, okay. That give the print copy of the handbook. Consistency has no. to do with historic consistency. I have one. I have talking one. about uh, advertising oh. consistency or everyone else wanting two signs. I think yeah. that's not our purview. I think we're supposed to be judging historic significant historic architecture. I think the sign's okay. Well, so, in the 40 years that I've lived downtown, which has been my whole life, when I was born yet, but there's never been a sign, two story, a sign, excuse me. There's never been a store with two signs out front ever. And if you look back at any of the pictures going back the past hundred years, there isn't. So I think it's a weird thing within right. 20 feet of each other to stick up two signs. Because then it's going to be three, then it's going to be four, and then that's well, it can only be as many as the zoning regulations. Which change all the time. I just I just think it's a weird look. I mean, okay. that's all. I'm well, saying. That's the appropriate so uh, I agree. And 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 I mean, one could also argue it's been done without our approval, so that's another issue. That's. I mean, I'm not. I'm just saying. I wouldn't throw myself on that sword. Just, but we are a historic district commission board, like, and we can have our different opinions. Yeah. That's okay, and it's also okay to. So, we're here to help you yeah. get historic what, traditions exist for signs. So you, we have to consider historic traditions. That's um, in the handbook. So what do you? What would you like your certificate of appropriateness to say? One sign or two signs? Well, I'd like the owner would like two signs, but if if that's going to get shot down, then I don't want to throw away two more weeks. Correct. That's why. <laughs> that's why I made uh, my suggestion for one, and then come back. I, I mean, I've seen other boards reduce a request in their deliberations yeah. through that. Um, I don't know if you are comfortable doing that. Um, so if I asked for two, you could say, well, you're only getting one and it's approved. Yeah, I don't think it's- I don't want to get turned away for two weeks. No, that's right. That's what I'm saying. If you get turned away for two weeks, what's going to happen? Um, no, we're just, John will be down there and yelling at us for having the sun. <laughs> oh, I don't yell. I take pictures and send emails. I'm very quiet. <laughs> Come on, Peter. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to be in non compliance anymore. I mean, it's not. Words are hurtful, Peter. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. It's I, just. A, if he applies, if we make a motion for two and it gets voted down, you're saying we cannot make a motion for one after that. No. I believe we can. I think on Robert's right rules of orders, once a motion is denied, it's denied you can't reintroduce it, right? No, I'm introducing a second motion significantly different. You can't introduce the same motion. I agree, John. But apparently one sign is significantly different than two signs, so we wouldn't be having this discussion. I see no reason why after two signs, it's not approved, we can we can make a motion for one sign and approve it, and you can get out of here with a sign. I, yeah, I've seen many commissions do that. Zoning boards of appeal. It's weird if you deny the application, right? Giving it a second. If we deny, we have to provide a reason. Our reason would be we don't like the second sign, and we we'll give them a method to correct it. The correction would be you have to remove one of the signs. I think it'd be perfectly logical and expedient for us to then immediately make that do that right today. Make There's that no correction. reason to penalize them for a two week delay when we have a, a thing we'll approve tonight. Penalizing. Pardon okay. me. Not penalizing. I believe we're penalizing them if we don't, if you we make them wait two well, weeks. You could they're amend, they're already, you could amend well, that motion that during your deliberations. I think he's supposed to take them back down if he's denied. Not take them down. It's not a big deal. He's not there up. No matter what well, we vote, they're going to be up. You know, that's could, the problem. You could amend the motion during your deliberations. Correct. Right. So I just looked up Barbara's words. Would have, you'd have to amend the motion before denying it. If you're denying it, you can't then reintroduce it. Yeah, I, I agree. Oh, we, yeah, we, right. And Robert, yeah. yeah if we, we go deny it, we cannot then redo it. And somebody would, yeah, right. Because it's like you're reapproving the application. Okay. Good. You want to just take it with the two? Just yeah. Two or All right. Anything else? Yeah. Which sign would you prefer? 
the one at their door, which is once we get into deliberations, we don't get to talk to you anymore. <laughs> the one at their door would be most appropriate, which is this one. Here. So the, the, uh, the north, one. north one. North. So in a worst case scenario, the lights, the sign in the middle, and the sign on the door. And the shoulders. No Okay. You pointed at the one. Do you want to make sure you got the right the one that they He prefer. said north. The one nearest bank. You want to circle it? Or bank. Uh, Put a little number one I'm by. Give you these, yes, yeah. One, two, three. Can I just say one last thing? It does say on, um, I guess, one one dash four seven of our our uh, manual that the sign should reflect the traditions of the district. So, just one thing to keep in mind in our in our handbook. I think it does. We heard you. Guys. We heard you. First, well, I, first, I, second, I, 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 the, the, fourth the reading out of the we got it. Reading out of the handbook sounds like that's right. I, I've been interrupted several times, so yeah. thank you because I got it. Okay, we're good. Move forward. Yeah. Anyone in the audience have anything to say in support of the application? Anyone against the application? HTC twenty four dash zero zero five four is closed. All right, we'll move on to consideration of public hearings. HTC 24-0052, 74 High Street. Are there any motions or comments? I will make a motion to approve. I'll second. My only comment is that I think as a historic district commission board, if there are cedar shake on a roof, we should be continuing with cedar shake. Which isn't relevant to this, but it's just a comment. It's always relevant, but it's not, it doesn't change the notion. Because I think all those houses around it were cedar shaken on the house over time. And I think it's fine to replace them as others have. So that's my comment. All in favor? Packa, aye. Brady, aye. Goodman, aye. Ferguson, aye. Keatsman, aye. HTC 24 0052 was approved. HDC 24-0053 to Gravel Street. This is the flag pole on the sidewalk. Ferguson will make a motion to approve. Goodman will second. Any comments? I will make the comment that I do think a 30-foot flagpole is quite high. But it's obviously half of what the main one is. But that I just think comparatively to that area, that is. I would like to put in that the flagpole cannot exceed thirty feet as part of the. Uh, Do you want a motion? motion? Yeah, I'd like to modify the motion to stipulate that the flagpole cannot exceed thirty feet. All right, I'll second the modified motion. All in favor? Well, no. I just, I just want to make a comment. <clears throat> but I think the height is fine. Okay. And if it were two feet higher, you wouldn't know anything. And I got to say, if I can scaled against the building and the um, pump station, I think it's a perfect. It's it's the scaling looks appropriate. It's going to be. It, it's I a think, flag force of thirty foot flag force. Yeah, so it's, it's a thirty. Doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, all in favor? Of oh, the amendment or the original motion? The application is a 30 foot flagpole. So then the mod uh, modification drop doesn't. Is irrelevant. Yeah. All in favor? Packa, aye. Brady, aye. Goodman, aye. Ferguson, aye. Keatsman, aye. HDC 24 0053 is approved. HDC 24 0054 on Water Street. This is the signage, shutters, and the lights. I would make a motion to approve the removal of the shutters, the lights, the middle side, and one side on the north side. And Ferguson will second that. That's I was about to do the same. 
Does anyone have any comments? In favor? Uh, Packa, aye. Brady, aye. Goodman, aye. Ferguson, aye. Caseman, aye. HTC 24-0054 is Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Uh, moving on to pre applications. Come here. Uh, he signed the sheet. What's, what's the... Okay. We just have to make a motion to. All right. What's your address again? 35, 35 West Mystic. 35 West Mystic. You're the brown house that's going to be amazingly renovated. Yes. <laughs> the windows arrived today from Anderson. Uh -huh. 12 weeks. Nice. Uh, awesome. so awesome. um, pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on one second. I'd like to. Did you make a motion yes, to add it? Okay. I, uh, Ferguson seconds the motion to add. All in favor? Becca, aye. Brady, aye. Goodman, aye. Ferguson, aye. Keatsman, aye. Okay, so Jeffrey Moriarty, 35 West Mystic Avenue. Um, I'm here to talk about my back deck. I have an application in, which you'll hear on the 20th, but I wanted to just run some details um, by you in case I need to course correct what's in the application. So I'm rebuilding it, tearing it, it's rotted, it's, it's in bad shape. It's being torn down, rebuilt, same size shape and design, just the materials are different. Um, so there's a couple things. Tough. If you could show oh, yeah. this, yeah. Um, I want to put low voltage lighted caps on the cap sleeves. I don't know if they're doesn't matter. Does. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Can, right. I, can I just ask a quick question? This is the deck that faces the river, right? It faces like yeah. a cliff. I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure yeah. we can even it's, see it. You can't. I mean, I appreciate you coming to us, it. but if we yeah. can't see it, so I don't. The staircase is very prominent, so. Um, I grew up on Irving Street, so I know your yeah, house. So every like time I came to the see, bottom and made a left or right, I'd see it. You can see the staircase yeah. in the corner pretty, pretty well. So, all right. Um, but if the light up cab is, would be a light, which we it's don't a light. It's, a, it's okay. All right. Do it. all right. And then materials. I looked at natural materials, but I've decided I want to go with this Timber Tech Advanced PVC. You know, that's more money than. Yes, okay. I do. But I I find the supply chain of EPA problematic, um, and so I'd rather go with kind of an American-made uh, product. So you don't like children harvesting it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but is there precedence for this? And mm -hmm. okay. okay, all right. And then just a lot of people sometimes say like it's price. It's not. No, it's yeah. I it's um, I mean it's a fifty-year product. Pretty much. All right. So so railing. If you just look at this post sleeve, so this is PVC, this is RDI, which I think is owned by Boston Cedar. It's the same as like Intex or- um, So it's extruded? It's ex yeah, it's extruded, but it's two, it's two layer. Um, so it's 100%, you know, PV, cellular PVC. It's the same as Intex. It's a little bit different than the AZAC product because I think the AZAC, Post sleeves have a little bit of wood fiber in it, and this doesn't. This is 100. percent Yeah, PVC. we've only said no to railings that have that like high sheen. high sheen. Yeah, so this is sad, and I like that has the, the chamfered edge. So um, yeah, okay, all right. And then I'll I'll detail all the I'm doing cable railing, which is there now. So I'll detail that um, when I come up to one. So. Okay, yeah, that's it. Easy. So I'll, I'll see I'll see you in two weeks. All right, okay. all right. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thanks. Happy night. Thank you. you too. Every time I drive by, I'm like, I take a. Just wait, in six weeks, it's yeah. going to be totally different. Well, that's, that's yes. what I've been Great. waiting for. Can't wait like, to see it. I'm just so excited for you. Uh, public communications? Nobody on. All right. I have one that's come back up that you might be familiar with. It's, I think, somewhat part of our purview, part or not. The, the the blue kayak sandwich boards. So I guess the confusion comes, and maybe you can explain, is there's none on public areas. So she's had to take the one down that was... 
So I guess sort of the confusion is if you walk down Main Street or down in front of Factory Square, there's sandwich boards on sidewalks, which are public. Uh, the one that's on kind of across from the Toyster Club, that's private property. I understand that. She put that on private property. What I'm saying is she wanted one on the corner of like Water and Main and said she couldn't have it because it's public property. But then every other business no. has a sandwich board. Or right. was she in? It would have to be in front of her property. So it, it, does she have one in front of her? Or property so far down, nobody can see it. She's just trying to get business. And, yeah. and I guess, and again, she talks because she knows me. I mean, she was told she couldn't have it on public property, but everybody else has theirs on public property. Well, if it's right directly in front of their business, like chapter one has one that's right, right. in front of exactly. chapter one. Yeah. So that's so, allowed, but. But well, she can have it in front of her business, but not. Right. So that's part of the, the code that it can be in front of your business, public property, just but not on public property. Can be on public property in front of your business. Okay. Yeah. What what, what property are you talking about? So um Blue Kayak used to be where Seaport Marinas are burned down and now she's further down. I so across from the Daniel Packer. That the Daniel Packer and oh she's in the marina next yeah. year. Right. And so she was trying to get signs downtown to direct yeah. customers to her and I guess somebody complained and we had yeah, some Packer. of them were on the sidewalk, just on public properties. Yeah. And so she's trying to understand why. Right. Some were on public property, but hers could Right, because they're directly in front. Otherwise, if they weren't limited to directly in front, everybody okay. would have signs everywhere. All over the side. Well, the exactly. Side. That's, yeah, so I'm trying but to... But the one that, yeah, this, she has one that, that's on the private property, which is fine, right. because it's, we can't regulate content on private, so it's... Right. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that's all I had. One more minutes. Yeah, we've got a backlog. I've reviewed them all. I'm happy to make one motion for all three sets. I want. I move that we approve the minutes of the, maybe I should read this one, of the regular meetings held on July 16, July 2, and June 18. Yeah, this is one minor, really minor thing. Um, on page 38 of her agenda. That's the first set of minutes on the 16th. It just says members absent, Brady, Keatsman, Leonard, just missing a cop. Which, which set are you talking about? The 16th. Members absent. Members present. Absent, Brady. Oh, there should be a comma in there. Yeah, sure. he, he has it written there, too. Yeah. Apparently, it didn't make it in. There should be a comma between Brady and Keatsman. Otherwise, it looks like Brady Keatsman. Uh, so, do you want I'll revise my motion to say, to say that, that, Eric? It's fine. Just tell her to have a comma. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, so you can. Yeah, I'll, I'll second all in favor. Becca, aye. Brady, aye. Goodman, aye. Ferguson, aye. Keatsman, aye. Uh, old business. The only thing I have is I got the uh, comments from the attorney relative to the changes. Um, I need to go through them. That's it. I will get to that before the next meeting. Are you, is it appropriate to share any of the comments or should we just wait till you Let's go? wait. Let's wait. Okay. All right. Just, you know, Curiosity killed the cat there, buddy. Yep. <laughs> I mean, upon quick review, there wasn't a lot of major stuff. Okay. But I want to just go through it to make sure it's not. So, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Um, Eight ice house lane was a new generator. I don't know anything about that. So we'll just deal with that next time. All right, any new business? Uh, I have no new business. Okay. Is old business like your report? What's I don't your... have one. <laughs> so you haven't heard anything from the guy on High Street? No, no. Uh, we sent a letter out just recently to. I I, I have his number. I called him. We talked to him on the phone. I talked to him once when Tim was there. 
uh, okay, oh, I'm sorry, I'll get it in, and nothing happens. So yeah, we'll just they'll send a notice of violation, and you know, with strong language, that we're going to send it to the attorney. So. I mean, the uh, bank and bridge is just on pause. I believe so. Tim has been dealing with that, not me. I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. No, just curious on where we were. Yep. Uh, just one last comment. I just think. We have a handbook we work towards it, but I still think that we need to remember at times, not always, that we are in the historic district commission and we just need to really consider that because I think a lot of stuff has gone away that should have made should have stayed over the past X amount of years. And I think it's just things that you lose it, you lose it. So you lost the roof on that. Well, it's minor. You lost the roof on the historic structure on the National Register of Historic Places, which you'll never get back. Again, I understand the money thing. But I think it's important to really consider the decisions before you just make them. On some things. On other things, not so much. I mean, I'd, I'd like to add to that. Actually, I've been working on a project with the State Historic Preservation Office. I'm doing thing with here, and we we're talking about that. Yeah, they've done studies that millennials will tend to move into areas and spend money in areas that are historically preserved in a, a true fashion. I think especially for business owners, property owners in town, for looking at the future of our town, you just want to step away from what our job is, but just protecting the town and its future, that's something to consider if we want to attract new people moving in and, and new investment. I mean, get deeper into the data if you guys ever want, but that's, I think, I think Eric brings up a valid point. Say it. I, well, I'm going to speak from the, I'm going to take off my historic district hat and put my executive director of a small amount of profit hat and that that's just 44,000. I know is one, but 27,000, that's a chunk of change for a small nonprofit. And I, I agree. Like if it was a private, maybe if it was a private owner who was come in and was doing other renovations, we would say, Hey, find a budget for keeping the cedar roof. But I'm just, I think the alternative of the roof leaking and a lot of the archival material being ruined is far worse alternative than making them keep a wood shingled roof for the short term or however until the roofs start leaking so oh, that was that, that was i'm not the fence i'm not trying to be offensive i'm just saying i that was the perspective i took is i think they said it's not leaking now, but I appreciate the fact that they're being proactive to save the archives and the information that they have in there. So that was my process of thinking. Which I don't disagree with you. You know, me usually being the guy that's way over here, yeah. why I sort of had that same feeling to Eric's, but I'm just saying as, as more of a 30,000 foot view thing, I think, you know, Do we need, right? no, I think we just it, talking about protecting the, the, you know, whether it was by design or by accident, People that came through it years before us kept this town very um, original, very authentic, which is why this town has seen the economic boom it's had. I just don't want to have us be very short sighted and throw away 300 years of you know, good stewardship. I don't want to reinforce your judgment, though, Bill. I think it's a good one. According to the State Historic Office, the number one way we lose historic buildings is simply through neglect people can't maintain them. so um i'd rather have i guess an historic building in town with an asphalt roof than no historic building which is kind of 
I don't disagree. I mean, you know, and we won't believe this. There's also grants available. Maybe they didn't have anybody to write the grants. And again, there's a guy that usually would have agreed 100. percent That's why I I yeah. felt the way you guys so felt too. Good choice. Good choice. Yeah, I mean, you have to weigh all perspectives. In the big picture, Eric's not wrong. I think he's 100 percent correct. Sure. Sure.